This is the unofficial Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures Game Podcast. So, strap yourself in. Stay on target. Fly casual. Let the Wookiee win. And more importantly, enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the X-Wing Podcast. I'm Ben Curry. What episode is it? Episode 6. So we're talking about painting ships. Good. Okay. We've had a few attempts at this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Ben Curry. And I'm Ben Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going, because I'm yes. reluctant to edit again. Okay. Um, and this fifth, episode fifth is... time is a charm. Yes. Yeah, so this episode is all about painting ships, repaints. Yes. Um, we've got some basic minimum stuff that I've done, and some... Um, I was going to say, I, complete... I, thought my, I thought mine was pretty basic minimum, <laughs> but... Okay. And some kind of complete repaints, which you've done. Um, I wouldn't go as far as complete repaints. And then we're going to but, sort of talk about some of the stuff we've seen online yeah. as well, which is pretty spectacular. Or, pretty, yeah, very um, spectacular. I'll say actually. some of the stuff. One of the one of the blogs we've seen, which if you want to learn more about what we've talked about on this show, you can probably go and check that one out. Yeah. Because it's a great one. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do it. What have you been doing since the last episode, Ben? Um, well, we went and made a cup of tea. Drinking and then tea. Uh, we, we came back up and Eating pressed biscuits. record. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, we're recording back to back with yep. the last show. Um, so I think we're going to get um, straight into things. So uh, we'll be back after this break to talk about painting ships. Okay, so let's get into painting ships. We're going to try and not be so childish now. We're a bit excitable at the start of this one. It has been a while, you know. Not yeah, recorded for yeah. a bit, so and get we it had, out of the system. And we had some sugar earlier had as well. some sugar, yeah. yeah. Although you made me tea with no sugar in, I wasn't happy. Okay, so we're going to start with, I think, my way, because it's nice and simple. And I, I imagine there's probably two sort of routes into X-Wing, or probably three, people who just pick up X-Wing, having never miniature game before. Yeah. Um, but I kind of think being Fantasy Flight Games, there's the board game and card gamers who have come into it, um, come into the miniatures game for the first time. And then there's also the miniature gamers who have stepped into yeah, sort of a, a less... Less hobby oriented uh, miniatures game. So yeah. and are all around the age of Star Wars was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so there's the guys who are, have got a, a hobby background who, who can probably do all the stuff we're talking about on this show, um, you know, fairly easily because it's n- none of our even your methods, which are more in depth than mine, um, are still I'd say beginner level. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, whereas mine, anyone can do with a paintbrush and some paints. It's not at all difficult. Um, so we'll start with mine. Um, okay. And it's literally the stock ship, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at my uh, my favourite ship, the Royal Guard. The Royal Guard. Um, so it's a nice bright red ship, and all I've done literally is on the tips of the wings where the lasers are, um, I've just painted them as if they've, they've been firing and they're, they're showing a bit of heat. So yeah. um, it's a bit of... I picked the wrong ship, really, because it's red. Um, let's pick the blue ship. Um, it's basically a bit of a red dry brush, um, a, a bit of a, an orange, a bit of a, a yellow on the tip, and a tiny dot of white right on the end to make mm-hmm. the lasers look like they've been shooting and they've, it's a bit of heat spreading into the the ship and i think when you especially when you put the four four together that i've done and all the the ends like, like the glowing yeah, shooting, yeah. i think just that one little effect makes quite a difference so what i'll do is on the show notes for this as well as having photos of all our ships i'm going to put a comparison of particularly my x-wing because i've got i've got unpainted x-wings and painted x-wings oh i've not um, seen x-wing and I've done an X-wing the same. The end of, ends of his guns have been had the same treatment, and the backs of his engines have had the same as well. And I'm, I'm sure um, the the true Star Wars fans might crucify me for putting glowy red engines on an X-wing. Um, are they not blue on it? Or maybe not actually. Maybe they are glowy red on an X-wing. Depends which um, edition you watch. Yeah, exactly. But I thought it looked cool and had a splash of colour. Yeah, how much Luke has messed with it? And it is literally a, the tiniest. It took me, I think it took me like 20 minutes. You sat and did one and showed me how you did yours. Yeah. And then I did the others myself. And it, it is literally just the smallest amount of work. So. Oh, yeah. It, it's just two dry brushes. And so then, and first then thing then, for those that don't know, what's dry brushing? How do you do dry brush? Um, get your brush, dip it in your paint, <laughs> wipe off most of the paint, yep. and then flick it back and forth. So what you're looking to do is um, leave a thin layer of paint on the 
raised edges. Yeah, the highest raised so bits, isn't it? Almost like you're doing, you know, did everyone do like rubbings of stuff in school where you get mm, that's a good, paper <laughs> good analogy. And, and you rub on it with a pencil or a wax crayon and you just get the, the raised bits. It's similar sort of theory to that. Yeah, and what that has the effect with, particularly with um, the colours we use on here, you know, there's a tiny bit of red in there, there's mainly oranges and yellows. Yeah. It it really picks up the bright colour on the raised edge to look like the light's reflecting yeah. on it. Yeah. So it's almost like there's a light source reflecting on the metal and it's just picking up the high bits. And you're still seeing the, the standard X-Wing colour underneath uh, um, showing through slightly. Um, and it just looks like, the, you know, the edges are glowing with reflection from the, the hot tips of the lasers. And, you know, it's, you know, I like it. It just makes them stand out a little, makes them look a little bit different. Would things get hot in space? There's a question. If a tree man fell down in a wood, would you hear it thunder stomp? <laughs> There's another question. <laughs> no, but you'd hear it tree whack. Oh, right, you'd hear it tree whack. That's all right then. Mm. So, yeah, um, so I've done that on my X Wing. I've done my um, interceptors. And yep. then we'll move on to my um, space cow. Space cow, yeah, because I've done that on the lasers as well at the front. Um, just a tiny bit of colour splashed on them. But then on the back, we've done some engine effects. Yeah. I think I did one side and you did the other on this. Um, I think we might have done it on my Falcon as well. I can't remember. Um, so how did we go about doing the, the engine effects on this one? Um, so that was the same thing, wasn't it? Just a, a, a light dry brush around the engine exhaust. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the kind of big thing. flaps, yeah. sort of oblongy, circly bits. <laughs> yeah, just to try and simulate that sort of engine glow that you see in the movies yeah so again the the engine bit's blue and then it's just a bit of blue reflected onto the yeah. white too and it's literally dead simple took us seconds and the joys of this is if if you do it it looks terrible lick it dead quick oh yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Paint comes yeah. off. yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> so it's really difficult to make yeah. a bad mess of it you know um and it was super simple now the colors i used um anyone wanting to get their hands on some um if you've never bought any paint before um you can probably go to, just go to the Games Workshop website, pick up a small dry brush, yep. um, and pick up um, Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and White Scar, which is white, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And those three colours will, will do you fine. If you're a bit more um, in-depth and you want to put some extras in there, there's, you can use the um, the red glaze, which thinks Bloodletter Glaze, yep. um, and you can use that as well to... to have a play with um, and also i think the engine glow was the technical paint um which is the skink something or other <laughs> um, it's, yeah one of the dry, yeah. dry it's paints. one of the dry paints it's, you know you don't necessarily need to use those colors do you you know no any any do it. red orange and white to be honest i don't think i used uh, oh no sorry we had um flash gets yellow as well so orange yeah. yellow and white you don't really need the red um you can get away with just the orange yeah, yellow and yeah. white um so it's super simple, and I'll sh I'll put the photo up of the two X-wings side by side, and I'll throw the the new X-wing with the alternate paint job from the um, the Rebel transport on that picture as well. So you've got the three of them side by side. You can see the difference, and I was really impressed by how little work for how much effect it made. Yeah, it does. It it does change them quite a lot because the the paint jobs that come with them. We we spoke about this before on the show. Is is perfectly fine. Um, but it adds that little bit of their makes mind. it yours, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so on the flip side of things, um, you've done a lot more on yours. I mean, it's still not you've not gone massively to town, oh, but then you no. have done a complete repaint. Um, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say it was a complete repaint because you know I'm not. So sprayed. Did, I'm going to say, did you spray, spray in black to start? No, no not by any okay. stretch. So, so the original uh, colours are the, your base coat essentially. Basically, yeah. The basically. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> got the bomber in my hand now so that's that's a sort of more bluey gray isn't it and that was just as it was washed it with with black uh, to bring out the detail a little bit more and then literally blue a little bit of dark gray in there and then just highlighted it up again the ties in fact all the imperial stuff works really well for this because there's a lot of really sharp edges so you can just get the edge of your brush and scrape it along the sides yeah, I noticed that with, um, I think I've done it on one of my interceptors or one of my tyres. Some of the, again, the Games Workshop Citadel paints, mm. they they do, it's like a Space Wolf blue, or I'm not sure, entirely sure what they call it nowadays. It's like a, a bluey white, yeah. and it's a great, just a highlight colour, yeah. to use that straight out of the part as a sharp highlight on the edges of the wings, and mm. I thought yeah. that worked really well. 
Yeah, um, so that works really well for them. And then the other thing that I've done on them is very similar to what you've done with the lasers, um, but the little like almost like little lamps under the TIE fighter um, and the engines. Again, just giving them that little bit of a little bit of a glow, almost like a light source type thing. Now that is heresy. The the blue glow out the back of a TIE fighter is heresy because they don't have them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> I did it before I realised that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but it does look cool on the models. It does look cool on the models. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, re-gloss the canopies. Yeah, now that one is a real... It's, there's some really dirty cheats when it comes oh, to painting, isn't absolutely, it? absolutely, yeah. Black lining and gloss are yeah. two really um, high-impact, effective, easy cheats. And yeah. on these ships, both of them techniques work really well, don't they? Yeah, I mean, if you did if you did nothing to them, to the stock stock ship other than um gloss the canopy and dry brush the lasers like ben just spoke about paint your stems black they look completely different to what you get out of the box for very little work they look so much better Mm, mm. and it's really simple yeah it it is um and then i've also done the done well done two fire sprays so before we get on to the fire spray if anyone wants to see um any of the stuff we're talking about so far um they're all up on the Facebook page for sure. So if you go yes. to just facebook.com forward slash X-Wing podcast, you can see all of these, all the pictures are on there. Um, I'll stick some in the show notes too. Um, but, you know, uh, they, they're all up there already. So you could pause mid-flow if you want. Yep. And go and have a look. Go and look. Um, so talk to us about this uh, the slave then. So or the fire spray. That was, again... Because this is one of my favourite ones you've done, I think. Um no, no big, big thing with it. Again, it all got washed, um, just to bring it out a little bit. But then what I did with um, a sponge was weathering effect. So, again, a, a grey that roughly was slightly darker than the actual main body of it, stippled that on with a sponge and then a little bit of silver right on the edges and you just get that little weathering effect on it. Um, because particularly the way it flies, obviously it doesn't need to be aerodynamical in space. Um, <laughs> but you've got to imagine it's going to be hitting loads of things. <laughs> so it just seems to suit It's it. a big flat board. But, yeah, so it <laughs> just it seems to... not like that, though, when it... No, like, like that works on radio well, doesn't it? Yeah, like, it does. Like that. Like that. Just like, like that. that. Oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so again, that was just a bit of weathering effect and then just some, some again, some just straight line edges on it. Um, and then what the, the actual painted, pre-painted one comes with is like little, not runes, but kind of like little markings on the side. So I just added a few more of those. Same dry brushing technique on the lasers, uh, but then also uh, on the engines as well. So the engines got done with, uh, again, a, a dry brush paint, which I think is rise of rust from... Yeah, so Games Workshop recently bought out um, a whole bunch of the te- um technical paints um, and they're like some different effects, so there's rust and things like that. And it's like a really orange, burnt sort of colour. It works yeah. well for engine glow, I think. Well, it works well for rust. Yeah, of course. Typhus corrosion, is that the one? No, it's orange. No, okay. Maybe maybe it's not a, a technical paint. It was a, a layer of paint. But yeah... Um, dry paint. A dry paint, is it? Okay. So we'll um, we'll stick the paints we've used in the show notes so it's fairly easy to find. Mm. Um, now, what do you want to talk about next? Some of the, the more higher-end stuff we've seen? Or do you want to talk about the, the bases and the stems? Um, well, yeah, the bases and the stems. We, the, again, this, this blog that we've just been looking at, done some amazing amazing things mm. but so the guy's thing, name is Rodent Mastermind oh, see, and I'm just going to completely slag the guy off now no no um, and it's on the A Few Maneuvers forums right um, and the ships and the paintings amazing isn't oh, it oh yeah so, um, you know some of the freehand is done on so the, the, the TIE fighters on the side of the wing have got the big uh, imperial symbol mm. and uh, when I was looking at it a minute ago it's like is that really painted on or is that a transfer or something because it's, it's it's perfect. It's really, really good. Um, but straight away, I was saying to you, wasn't I, that w- why is he not painting yeah, the stems? Yeah, he used brass rod for his stems and it's left it brass. Yeah, so it's just, in that. it's just the, the, the clear plastic base, the cardboard um, information token, um, and then brass stems. And it's like, oh, man. Uh, but then later on through his blog, he's got some of them where he's painted the the, the, the base with like stars. Mm. And things he's like doing that. Ba- the bases to match his playmat. That's right. Which is just really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but then left the left the stems brass. Yeah. So one of the really easy 
ways to make your ships look a lot different from um, standard is just spray spray your bases. Yeah. Your bases. So take your ship off your top of your stem. Yep. Um, have your base with your two levels of stick, or whatever they're called, um, and just spray them all black. We use I use the Games Workshop paint, um, and it makes a massive difference. I think. Oh yeah, it, definitely. And also, I've I've seen as well. Um, someone did it blue. We played. Is it was it Martin? Yes, Martin. Who ran the tournament? We played at the sanctuary. He did his blue, and that looked really cool as well. Um, it, it looked a bit weird. So when he had them on like top of his box, it looked really weird. Because they were really, really quite bright blue and almost like a translucent blue as well. But then when you put them on the blackboard, mm. they dulled down a bit and they look really good. Yeah, I, um, I really like the uh, the effect with a different coloured base because it's just, it's a bit jarring. You know, you expect to see clear ones mm-hmm. and you expect to see black ones. So when you see one a different colour, you're like, wow. Yeah, it really makes it jump out. And you know, there's no mis- mistake in your ships when you're on the table. No, that's true. There's a, a, a red stem or a, a black stem. Um, the other thing I quite like the idea of is painting them black like they are, and then like maybe the bottom couple of mil masking off and spraying them a different colour, just so the very bottoms are slightly different. Again, it's mm. just to ring it and show it's your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. A bit like uh, back in the day with Blood Bowl, where all the models are the same. Yeah. <laughs> and the red ones with the blitzers. And, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's some super easy ways to um, to really. Just splash a bit of paint out there and and make it your own and put your own stamp on it. But they're the they're the ones. Yeah, it's all down to up. how much how much work do you want to put into it because you could go as far as I, I don't know if you could strip them. I don't know what that would do. I don't know if there's any need to. Um, you can just respray them black, respray them white, and build up from there. Um, again, how much work do you want to put into it? Mm. But you mm. can get some really good results and really make them your own with very very little effort. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people will have got into this for the fact that it's pre-painted. Yeah. The other thing is, I think when people do look on the forums and you see a thread on the Fantasy Flight Games forums or on a Facebook page, repaints, and you think, oh, I'll have a look, I like some repaints. And you look at, like this Rodent Master Man, I'm looking at one yeah. of his A-wings now. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a, tiny little details. There's a skull with a circle around it um, on the side of the A-wing wing fin. And there's a, a rebel symbol on there as well, and it's all freehand. And I'd look at that and say, I can never do that. I'm just going to leave them out of the are. But then I think there's things you can do to splash a bit of colour on, and um, it's not all that difficult. No, it's not. There's it's some not. great effects, some great effects. See, going back to his bases, I do like what he's done with the stem. So the stem's still brass, which I think would be better if it was um, the star colours or, or just black, like what he's got on his actual base but the fact that it's thin brass rod mm. because that's i'm sure i've said this before on the show the i think the bases and the stems are the the bit that they draw too much attention don't they because they draw a lot of attention pinchy. they're very thick um and they're very cheap looking mm. um, whereas what he's done there with just the, the thin brass rod looks a bit more because it's not carrying any weight yep um you can get then you can get some nice varying heights as well um I really like that. I think uh, I might. You might have to steal it. <laughs> I might look at that. Yeah, when I yeah, do the yeah, definitely, uh, definitely do the rebels. Mm. Okay, so one more top tip, and we've just been arguing about this off air. Um, I said there's a really cool, easy way to do the edges of your cardboard stuff. So you paint the edges of your cardboard, particularly the cards on the ship bases. Yeah. Um, yeah, because if you're going to paint your base and your stem black, you don't want to leave the two mil of card. A dirty brown colour. Mm. So you said Sharpie. Yeah. That's good. Sharpie's really good. I agree. But, dum, 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 let me reach into oh. my drawer behind me. Drawer of you doom. Fill, fill, fill. Fill, fill with what? Oh, gosh. Uh, what do we talk about, Ben? Uh, uh, you do a daily show every day. Ta-da. What can you, oh, yeah. We so, have a dry white right. marker. So, <laughs> that's for goobers that can't draw within the lines. You know when you were a kid and you did colouring in? Yeah. Yeah. So dry white marker goes on your base and wipes right off. Yep. So when you're a goober who can't colour in like me and you go around the edges of your ship base and you draw all over the ship base where you're trying to be neat and you're not. Just um, use the edge of it so you can't go over the edges. Yeah, but you still when you've got a million tokens to, to draw around the edges of, um, <sighs> dry white marker will actually stain the edges black. Yeah. And if and, you get and, any and on the face, the top, it'll wipe yeah. off the face. So that's the top tip. And that was all my own doing. I figured out myself. 
<laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Listeners, send him a cookie. <laughs> I found it on the internet. <laughs> but unfortunately, the guy who said, I um, I can't remember whose tip that was, so I do apologise, but I did see it on Twitter. So you can't remember who so it was, so you stole it, it from was, your own. It was um, one of our followers on Twitter messaged and said, um, yeah, top tip. So it was quite cool. Mm. But yeah, dry white market. And I was just like... Oh yeah! <laughs> no, it's not a bad shout. So, yeah, it's a good sh- shout. I, was, I was quite pleased with myself when I got my mark out. I was like, oh, it actually works. Although all those hours we spent blacking the edges of tokens and blacking <laughs> the edges of range rollers, I didn't black them with a marker pen. I painted them with sort of old paints and brushes. <laughs> and then uh, Ben was kind enough to buy me a token set for my birthday, which is great. But now I've got um, sort of I can take them back. I've got guilt when I look at all my painted tokens, <laughs> painted cardboard tokens yeah. in my uh, in my box, and I'm not using them. I'm like, I painted them. They took me hours. <laughs> but you had fun doing it. Yeah, sure, sure. The, the tokens do look good. Should we talk about the tokens? Hmm. So we've gone to the effort. We've painted our ships. We've painted our bases. You know, they look great. We've made boards and that sort of thing. Um, and then we went out and bought, like I say, I bought you a set for your birthday, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we bought some the range rulers as well, and they really do look good. Yeah, do you know what I mean? They're again, they're a little bit garish on their own, but when they're on the black board, yeah, they really fit in. You look at one, it's like bright orange. It's like, yeah, uh, okay. But then, yeah, you chuck them down the table, they look cool. Mm. Um, and they're from where was it? Cogo, Co- Cog, the internet. The internet. Yeah, just search eBay for acrylic range x-wing rules yeah. or something like that and there's tons of them out there loads and loads of different websites um i know team covenant do them if you're in the states um i know uh yeah they just, just I, I, I just i just ebayed um and looked on there and there was only really one that was, that was doing them in any real quantities different packs different sets um although i did have a slight mild panic when they arrived because they, they were covered in like masking tape and the, the the plastic off the back of the perspex, um, but they take a bit of cleaning off, a bit of hot water. But once they're cleaned off, they look really, really good. Mm, they do, and it's Cogo Two, so it's Cog C O G O Two T W O. Right. Um, so yeah, that's I think that's where you got the tokens, and I bought you a set of rulers Rose for your birthday. From, yeah. So yeah, I got we got both got them from the same place. I think. Mm. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up um, painting and yeah. random, you know, customizing your x-wing set yeah, rather than um, just painting I mean, isn't one it one thing we should probably say is well if you are someone who's got into it from a fancy flight card game or board game and you've never painted anything before it's not that difficult just maybe just we should do a youtube video of us doing it because it's do. man we could do it now it'd be so quick in fact <laughs> you know what we will do a youtube video right now after the show of us painting and doing the lasers on one you say yours you're looking at me like you want to go home and I haven't got any ships. We'll get it up and we'll get it on. And yeah, yeah. We'll do it on an X-Wing and um, you'll see how easy it is. So yeah. just check out the, the X-Wing podcast on YouTube and um, you'll be able to see that video. It's super simple, really, really easy. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. And it does, you know, I might be blowing my own trumpet here saying how awesome it looks for so little effort, but I'm really happy with the results. Uh, yeah, like you say, if you post up some photos of um, your X-Wing before or, or, or one you've not done and the one next to it, the difference is huge. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. So maybe next step, I'm going to try and do some extra. I really like the uh, the shuttle as alternate colors. We've seen seen one tonight. Yeah, we've just seen that black, the one, black one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I really like the idea of mm. that. Although I've got to say, I do like just aesthetically the look of the shuttle on on the board in a game. White, big white space cow, big white ship in amongst the the, the dark grey ships. Mm. I, I do like that. Aesthetically, it looks really good, and I think yep. that's that's kind of like why I like the fire spray as well. It just adds that that, that fl- little flash of colour that you don't normally get. I think that looks very cool. Okay, well, we'll um, go for another break, and we'll come back and we'll wrap things up. Okay. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Right, so um, we're going to wrap things up. But before, before we do that, it's been a bit of a a hobby painting and that centric show. So yeah, before we bit. get out of here, we want to talk a bit about lists we've been playing recently. Okay. Um, although you looked at me and just said, Royal Guards, <laughs> um, as you I, gathered from last episode. Yeah. So are you really enjoying yeah. that list? Yeah, really enjoying the, the, the Inceptors. Um, so do you feel the need to go out and buy four red ones? No. 
How about painting your blue ones red? Uh, it'd bother me if I was playing four royal guards. No, I'd it, it, have red it, ones. It doesn't bother me that much. No, okay. Um, and like I said on the previous show, just for the colour or just for a different colour scheme, I can cope with that. Do you mm. mean? I've, got, I've got the cards. It's all about the cards. It's okay, fair enough. Yeah. One of the things I'm think as long the same lines as your four um, interceptors, I'm being drawn towards four X wings because I've got mm. the the rebel transport with the new pilots in. Oh yeah, and. None of them on their own excite me all that much. There's some really cool abilities. Some of them quite situational. Kind of like the Interceptor yeah. pilots, actually. Um, some of them are really good. Some of them are, are not so good. But I like the fact that you can have four X-Wings and you can still have a lot of variety between all your ships. Right. But it's the same ship. And also, four X-Wings together as a block look cool. Four X-Wings is good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. really good. Yeah. And I think it looks cool on the table. Four X-Wings flying together. That's 20, um, 20 wounds, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, so I, I'm getting the urge to fly that. But most recently, I've been playing a lot of Chewy um, with 2B Wings. Yes. And I took that to the store championships, which I think we recorded on the evening of the store championships, yes, our we last did, show. We? We came back. So since then, I've played um, Chewy and two heavy laser cannon Bs at the store champs. I've played him with... Um, Fire control systems. I played them with advanced sensors. Um, I've swapped the B wings out for Y wings as well. Yeah, they worked um, quite well, didn't they? That was really good. Yeah. It was really fun to use as well, just because you all three ships, rather than rather than chasing your opponent, you 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 rather you're flying into space and yeah, because you had um, engine ion, upgrade on one and ions, ions on both, on so the, two ion yeah. turrets on the Y wings. That was a really fun list to use. Yeah. I really enjoyed that and. It really messes with the interceptors as well because the 360 just mm. destroys them. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they lose all of their power. That maneuverability just goes. But then the four interceptors, with especially if they get close, with all those dice against the Falcon yeah. or against the Wise, with only one evade dice. Yeah, yeah. They just it's a brutal matchup that one. I think it it goes quickly both ways. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been really enjoying Chewy, and I started a, a thread on the net talking about the gunner or Luke on the Falcon, saying I wasn't a fan of it. Okay. And I'm, it's, I think it's one of those upgrades, what you can only need to have, but I hate having it. <laughs> We've got, <laughs> me and the gunner have a love-hate relationship. Yeah, yeah. I know and um, I kind of, I know he... Is it, ha- is it too cut and paste? I, it annoys me that it is the internet list. Yeah. Um, I like, I really, really like the expert handling. I think it's amazing mm. on the Falcon, mm. just because it gives you so much, just... It's crazy where you move, and it's 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 crazy where you don't move. Mm, you can move, spin on the spot. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, you can almost stay where you were, you and just, you can also you you fly him in such a way where you aren't looking for the optimal shot. You're more depriving your opponent of the optimal shot, and you. Oh, it's like a fantasy reference. It's almost playing an avoidance dark elf yeah. list where you, you're not looking to engage. You're looking to fly around the edges and kill, get kill shots in by just chipping away. And I like that sort of, you know, you, you can barrel roll into a sh- position where you can get a good shot and you're out of arc. And that's yeah. the optimal place for Chewy to be. And um, yeah, I'm really liking, mm-hmm. really liking the Chewy with expert handling. I think um, I'm always, always looking, there's two things that I look at now when I start writing lists and it's, what can I put engine upgrade on? Um, what can have expert handling? Because the en- Y-Wing with engine upgrade is really cool as well. It makes it fly so fast. And, you know, the Y-Wing's got a crap dial, but you do a one bank and then a one bank boost. And, you know, it, it's done. It's covered a lot of ground and it's done a 90 degree turn. Mm. And it's got a turret. And, yeah, it's it, it's really cool. Mm. I like it. No, no, you, you're right. We, we've played a few times with the, 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 the Chewy with that. And it's... It's really surprising what it can do, mm. and it doesn't even need that much room to do it in, which again is the other the other's quite a surprise. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean one thing actually one thing we didn't talk about on the Aces show actually, which which I've been doing a bit of is looking at placing your asteroids with the thought of deployment. So just just fiddling about with certainly with the Aces of where you will end up in three turns if you do a, a pre-planned out set of moves mm. so i think it's a you sort of set up <laughs> i had a whole morning of this yeah didn't I, while you was playing yana yeah uh, so you set up one and a bit from the edge and if you go five and then boost back towards the edge twice twice 
where um, the asteroid will be, so you're just hiding behind it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, and then you, you, your third move is a three turn with another boost, and you can end up plonking yourself just on the corner of this asteroid. Mm. And again, it's just looking at where do you end up, where do you then need to place your asteroid to use it as, as cover, essentially. Mm. And it's quite cool in the fact that you can measure the asteroid so if you do it on a blank table, yeah. you can measure where your ship's going to be and then you know where to place your asteroid exactly. um, to be able to do that. So that's quite cool. Yeah. Um, while you, you were playing Yana at a gaming day and I was sat on the table next to you and you two were like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm like moving my B-wings around to see what, what see I do. Where to, can go we'll see where they, they can go do, yeah. and where they end up. Yeah, I mean, um, I, to be honest with you, I think there's a, there's a future show in that. Yeah, I think so. There's, yeah. there's probably a dozen future shows yeah, in that. Yeah. But no, placing asteroids is a big, big part of the game. Oh, no, absolutely. You know, it's certainly one that you don't look at when you're a beginner. Um, no, I mean you just uh, throw your asteroids. Uh, when down. we were first started, we just chucked <clears throat> them on the table. Um, mm. But yeah, no, they, they can play a big, a big part of the game. Um, I've been playing a bit with. So I got a, I got a shuttle for my birthday. So I've been playing a bit with that, using the very much the, the cut and paste shuttle with Vader. Uh, but then run it with two fire sprays as well. So one just a, a bounty hunter with, with nothing, and then one which was um, Crass, Crass Extralix. With a laser cannon, cannon. re-rolling your second... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite cool. Yeah, it was. Um, the the bloody shuttle took some figuring out. <laughs> it's horrible to use, isn't oh it? Oh, my Lord. I love the shuttle, and I really love it with the, the boost upgrade, and it makes it move so fast, but... Okay. If you move it forward at too early, it's dead. Oh, <laughs> End it's, of story. <laughs> it's, not, it's not so much that it's... I didn't find it was dead. I found that it just flew past the action. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm... Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> and it takes so long to turn its ass back around mm. that I was playing Marcus, and it just killed everything else. And then when it kept, by the time it came back around, he'd manoeuvred back behind me. So I was having to try and turn around again. Oh, it was terrible terrible but then figured out very quickly that it's right get it to crash into something then stall it then crash into something again mm. and and then come in much later on in the game yeah, yeah. once i'd sort of got my head around that it was actually it's actually I was the really same. effective exactly yeah. the same learning curve with me it was like right here's my shuttle three forward yeah and then it's not in the game anymore yeah. so next game it's like right i'm not going to do that again i'm going to go one forward for three turns in a row Oh, that's out of the game as well. Yeah. So, you know... It's, it's literally got to not move for, for two out of the first four Do turns. a stall first turn, yeah. do a one bank, and then... Or, a or a, right, what I was yeah. doing was a, a crash first turn. Mm. Crash it, stall it, move one, stall it, and then go. Yep. Um, seemed to work better. Um, and then with, with that Vader on there, it, again, it's... Have you tried advanced sensors? Yeah. No, no. I've played the advanced sensors and boost which is really cool because it lets you do things like um, a, a boost before you then do a, a three bank, and your three banks are red, yep. so you do take stress, but it's no big deal because you've done your action already, and the ground you cover is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. You go so far, yeah. Um, or it's even a, a hard three, no, a hard two, I think it is. A hard two is a, um, a red maneuver as yeah, well on a shuttle. Actually. So just the moves you do with that, that advanced sensor, but then you start, you know, if you've evaded shuttle as well, it's, it starts being expensive. Um, it's, it's expensive for something that you're trying, that you're killing yourself mm. as well. But I like the fact that there's tons of things you can do it. The gunner, gunner's a good combo on there as well, because you can, right. you, you know, you, you gunner advanced sensors boost, you can get into the position to do what you want and put out loads of shots and that's Yeah, quite cool. it did, um, when I've played against it, it's never really done anything with it, it's shooting. It's always been the Vader force crush that's done the damage and caused the problems it's not until the other week when i was playing against marcus but i actually realized it shoots a lot mm, you know still if, three if, dice. If you can get that in if you can get it in focus it three focus dice plus vader yep it really does and it's also the stuff. fact that normally when you do a dog fight you'll fly up to someone you shoot your, your next round you'll probably shoot without an action because you've done a k turn or something yep. or you've crashed uh, whereas this thing you fly up and because you can do a hard stop at the time when other people are going to have to be moving somewhere you can probably get an extra shot and they're not shooting back at you yeah. and yeah it's it's cool it's got tons of options um but it is uh awfully barge like as well and if you you make the slightest <laughs> mistake with it all of a sudden it's exposed but that's the same with any ship really i think it's um, just magnified on that yeah yeah and it's the it's the maneuver it's the lack of maneuverability that really mm. exposes it if 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 you do get it wrong it just 
carries on flying past the <laughs> where you need it to be. And mm. but then you, you know, like I say, steep learning curve. But I find it drives a bit like my Mondeo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like your old Astra. Yeah, yeah. Or my old, my old Vectra. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. So on that note, we'll uh, we'll wrap things up. So um, future episodes we've got coming up. We're going to be talking about um, gaming tables. We've got that one to do. Yeah. We've so got our hands on some gaming mats. Um, yeah, we had some paint, mats made. We've painted, painted a board boards. each as well. So mm. we've got plenty to go out on that one. Um, we've got the Rebel Transport to cover. Yeah. Um, and you know, generally more. Li- oh, one thing. Maybe suppose, even a, a tantalus. Is mm, tantalus. Tantive. Tantive. Yeah. So when this one goes, let me think of times and dates. So we've got the UK Games Expo coming up. Are you going to be going to that? Um, I'm not sure. So I, I'm liking to, but I'm not it's sure. It's the national. It's the regionals. One of the regional events is on the Saturday, yep. and then the nationals is on the Sunday. Um, traditionally, I go to this event with my partner, and we just wander around, have a look at the board games, buy some stuff from the stores, play some demos, and and leave. I never generally game at this event, and the, the one year I want to game, <laughs> I'm actually out the country on my brother stag yeah. So I'm hoping you can go and maybe get the lowdown and let us know. Certainly, if you can pop up on a Saturday or something, maybe pop in on the Sunday, have a look around, and then yeah, like watch, say, the, watch I, the finals. I'd that quite, would be cool. I quite like to go and play, but. Mm. I think there's a, a bunch of the Warhammer crowd are going down for various other game systems. And yeah. There'll be a few of them down there. So it looks to be a good event. So uh, anyone who is going, let us know how you get on. Because I think by the time this one goes out, it's going to be it's going to be either around that time or yeah, just after will, maybe. So. Okay, well, thanks very much for listening. Yeah. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Cheers, everyone.